No, that's fine. Sorry. We're going to be going. We're going to be going from the start again anyway. Oh, right, I wasn't, yeah. too, ha okay. wasn't too happy with the audio quality. Um, mm -hmm. but this sounds this sounds much clearer, so it's nice. Um, but oh, let's let's take it back from back from that point. Let's get you uh, but a lot of what you said. You've got nailed, so it's great. Um, let's take it from introducing yourself. So, hi, I'm Brenda. Actually, might, can you tip your screen a little bit forward? So your head's a little further up in the in the video. Perfect. Okay. So I just get you to introduce yourself. You know, you're Brenda, you, you run FNQ Apartments and, um, you know, what sort of business it is. Okay. Hi, I'm Brenda from FNQ Apartments in Cairns and we are the premier holiday accommodation tours and transfers booking agent for Cairns. So if you want a fantastic holiday, we're the people to come to. Fantastic. Okay. Um, now let's go back right back to the start and let's talk about what the business was was like before street smart you know what uh how you guys were going you know what it was you know what the customers were like what was the money coming in like just generally talk about how the business was way before street smart okay um so i bought this business five years ago and it was in pretty good shape really the fellow who had it was very competent and particularly good with online uh, strategies. So the business when we got it was in good shape and certainly a good platform had been created for us to take it forward on. Um, we had at the time a number of different things happening uh, with the business. So wholly online, all online advertising, uh, pretty much Google AdWords advertising actually and a small amount of Facebook and very little search engine optimization. So between when I bought the business and um, sometime later, which was just under two years I think, that I encountered Street Smart, um, the business had been going along uh, fairly mundane. It, I had got to a point where I had created some improvement but that had plateaued and I really wasn't very happy about that. Yep, that's fine. Um, now let's talk about um, why you why you chose to get into this business. So what I'll do, what kind of get you to do is if you can sort of ask the question while the question's going. So I got into this business because I really, you know, instead of being like, okay. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, take it from there. Okay. I got into this business in a kind of roundabout sort of way. I had been a senior executive with uh, the Queensland Public Service for quite a lot of years. And to be honest, I was very disenchanted with that. I was fairly over the whole spin that uh, goes on and I didn't want to continue in that sort of a role for the rest of my working life, which I could see approaching, you know, in the future, not too distant future. So I made a decision to uh, leave the public service and to think about what I'd really like to do. I wanted to work in my own business. I wanted to have my own business. I didn't really care what that business was in, so long as it was making money, as it was um, commercially viable sort of an enterprise. I didn't really mind all that much. I just wanted to be my own boss and um, have all the fun and enjoyment that you get from your own hard work. I happened to come across this business kind of by accident and the fellow who had been, who had owned the business um, was a very, very friendly sort of chap and uh, we actually did the deal between us direct without any uh, sort of agencies involved. So when I bought the business, I actually knew nothing about business. I hadn't ever run my own business and I knew nothing about tourism and almost nothing about being online and certainly nothing about an online business. So I really started uh, at the very beginning in this business. Was it was it hard for you being you know coming into that sort of business with no experience and and you know not really knowing what you're going? Describe what it was like. Was it emotional for you? Was it um, you know was it really difficult for you to try and come into a business like that with no with no knowledge? 
it was extremely difficult to come into this business, probably any business, with no knowledge at all. One of the things that attracted me to this business was that the fellow who had the business had agreed to a four-week uh, plus, if necessary, handover and training program. And I have to say he did a really good job of doing that for me, training me in this business. And along the way, training me in that business gave me, you know, a lot of tips and pointers about managing a business. I was really, really lucky in my view that he also introduced me to his bookkeeper because she came on board with me when I took the business over and she really helped to get me set up properly. Her, along with our accountant, helped to get me set up properly with the financial side of things, with the accounting and just that day-to-day -day sort of financial running. Also, we were fairly fortunate that the bank that we were involved with at the time was running a mentoring program with Action Coach. And we went into that mentoring program. That was actually free at the time. And we went into that mentoring program. I was pretty determined to make a success of this business. No, well, I won't say that. I was 100% determined to make a success of this business because the statistics around public service servants uh, running a business and making a success of it were pretty poor at the time. And I knew those statistics and I wasn't going to become another business casualty. So we were really very happy to have the opportunity to uh, go into the uh, Action Coach mentoring program. And I then engaged an Action Coach for a little while. And I think that really helped me along the way because I had someone to, I had people to talk with um, in the mentoring program. And then I had the Action Coach who helped me with a whole range of things. But it wasn't that long before the business plateaued and that really gave me the pip. Uh, I wasn't going to have a business that plateaued because really I always saw this business as being sold one day and I wanted a good price for it and a business that didn't have a fantastic uh, profit margin, you, I knew right from the outset was not going to sell at the price that I wanted it to get for it. So yes, it was hard there were a lot of things on my plate. I mean, the hardest thing for me was having a wholly online business and having to understand all of that around, you know, keeping your website functioning and functioning well because that's that's the front door of your business um, with an online business. And so you weren't just going to open a door in the morning and smile. You, you really have to have your website functioning and it had to be uh, very, very good and attractive and working for the customers. And that was probably the hardest thing. And then getting my head around Google advertising and um, SEO was the next hardest thing. Um, life is a lot easier these days because I do have the backup and support of Street Smart. And I'm very grateful for that because it does make a difference. Okay. And what was the, you know, how was... Was it stressful on you and your husband? You know, what was the relationship with you guys like um, in this first sort of period? Was it difficult between you guys trying to run a business? Well, my husband never actually got involved in the business at the outset. He's always done his own thing. He, he, he works. Um, he's a subcontractor. He works. He does his own thing. He's always enjoyed that, and we didn't want to change that. He's a chippy, and he loves that, and he has no interest whatsoever really in online kind of activity. So it was always me. And yes, it has been stressful and difficult and lonely for me a lot of the time because the business, you know, it's it's an online business and I don't see customers and I, you know, my staff all, wait, all work from home offices so I don't see them all the time and all of the decision making was on my shoulders. My husband is like a rock in this business. So... You know, if ever I feel like I'm spinning out, uh, I can just say to him, God, I'm not coping at the moment. It's just, you know, I'm exhausted. It's driving me nuts. I can't get this done. I can't get that done. Um, the staff aren't, you know, meeting what I need and so on. But he's always there and he's kind and loving and he takes great care of me. And, and I guess that's what I think of as my rock. But as far as managing the business, the business decisions and what have you have always been mine. And no going into this business didn't put any kind of pressure 
on our relationship any more than pressures that we'd had previously. We've been married for a long time and we've been through some tricky times. The business hasn't been anything like that. Being in the public service was far more difficult for our family than this has been. Okay. Now, how'd, now, how'd you come across Street Smart? Well, I was in Toastmasters at the time and um, one of the women there had been to a business school. I, I never did find out from her how she came to be at a business school, but she had been to a business school. And when she returned, she sent me an email to say, look, Mal's going to be in Cairns on such and such a date doing a half day workshop. You really ought to get along. This stuff's really interesting. What they're doing is really interesting. And I, at that time was, you know, as I said, the business had plateaued. I was not happy. Um, I didn't, want the business still to continue to plateau and so I sort of saw it as a bit of an opportunity really. Um, so I did get along and I went as a VIP so that I could um, join Mel at the lunch table and that was a good thing to do because it was a bit of a jerk up the throat really, some of what he said to me and, uh, and that was okay. I guess I was ready for that. I actually signed up that day I bought a package, uh, Frustration to Freedom, um, and that package had the uh, business mastery every month, and at the time, those business masteries were run, one in Cairns and one in Townsville alternately, and I also had the business schools in that. I'm not sure about coaching, um, but... I went to every business mastery that I could possibly get to. I flew to Townsville several times. I drove to Townsville several times. Um, I think I might have missed one due to something unavoidable, like my husband having surgery or something. But I got to as many of those business masteries as I possibly could. And they were fantastic. And the thing there was that I was able to form a relationship with Ian, which was really very reassuring. Um, to me, Ian is a rock solid kind of person and it was really good to get to know him and to know that I had an ally there. Okay, now that leads to my sort of my, my next question which is what was your, so you, uh, you've arrived at this event, you've started hearing this content, what's your first impression of, of you know, Street Smart material versus other people's material? Well, I thought Mal was interesting. That was the first thing. Um, and Ian was clearly, you know, a, a successful person. So that was my very first take on the day. Um, but what they were talking about there was, was different to what I was hearing. In a way, it was different. I, I, there was a lot of conviction around what they were doing at the time, and that was good. Um, but it was different. What they were talking about was quite different. They were talking a lot about direct marketing and really, I mean, what Mal said to me was that I was in a lot of danger because I had all of my marketing online and I needed to do something about that because that was a risky place to be. As it turns out, I haven't managed to do something about that, but I have got better at what I'm doing online. And I'm doing different things online now, which I think Street Smart have, have come some way in the years since I've been involved with them too. So there was some different content there, which was really about emotional marketing. I think that I've got that word right. Um, but direct marketing. And, you know, I can't go up against some of the big players that we're up against, like Booking.com and Expedia and what if and those ones, I can't go up against those with a Google advertising campaign. I'm never going to be able to match that, um, you know, financially. I will never have the kind of budget that they have to push hard and to go onto TV and all that sort of thing. I, I, that, I can't do that. And so it was really good for me to find Street Smart and know that there was quite likely something else that I could do that would be different to what my competitors were doing and would get me results. And that's what really interested me. Okay. So you 
you know, what what made you sign up for a pack then? You know, what was the what was the thing that pushed you over the edge? Oh, I wanted to know what it was that I had to do differently. Um, when I was with Action Coach, I, a lot of the platforms, as far as data collection and understanding what you've got to do to get more leads, there was, you know, I'd done a lot of that. Um, so really what I thought with Street Smart was that it was the next level for me. I could build on what I already had known and done and find some other options that I wasn't getting um, from my current coaching program. So, you know, I, I was I was at that stage fairly unnerved by the idea that I was really up against the very big players in tourism and I didn't really know what else I could do. So when I could see there might be something with Street Smart that really drove me that day to just take that package. Um, you know, I'm not going to pretend for a minute that I had $5,000 to spare. I mean, whoever does, whoever can just pluck $5,000 or whatever out of thin air and go, yep, I'll go and do this. But it was clear to me that if I wanted to go to that next level, I had to find out what else I could do that was different and that's what I wanted to do. Cool. So you've signed up and you have started to get the books and the, and the training. How, do you, how did yeah. you find the, uh, the written material? Um, yeah, I waded through pretty much all of that and I started using it as well uh, early on. Um, there was a lot there that I could use that I've subsequently used. There's a lot there that I didn't, but I know it's there. I can, can at some point in time go back to it and there's every likelihood that I will. The biggest thing that I found with my frustration to freedom package was the business mastery. That was the business mastery sessions were then still fantastic. And any time I can get to them now, I still do, which is infrequent, but I still get to them when I can. And I still find the same from them, which is that it's, I find that I get very motivated by attending those, whether I learn something new or I just get reminded of something that I knew but I've forgotten I knew, or whether it just fires me up a little bit, I do find those business masteries really, really good. So the, the box of materials that I got was good. I did wade through a lot of that fairly quickly. Um, I did get to the business masteries straight away and I went to the first business school that came up. Well, pretty much that into my next question, which was, you know, what was your, what, because obviously you've now done a business, you've gone and done a, naved in a business mastery with Ian, um, you know, what's your, what's your impression of Ian and what is your first impression of business mastery, you know, in, in sort of a short uh, paragraph, what is your impression of you know, Ian and business mastery? Well, I, my impression of Ian is that he's, uh, he's an absolutely straight up honest Aussie guy and I could rely on him and I could trust him and that's what I've found to be true. And with the business mastery, uh, there's just a lot of content there that's really, really useful. And, you know, as I said, even if it's just a reminder of something that I've, I've known for a long time, but just to refresh on it, that's, that's still really good. I wish I could get to every business mastery. I can't, but I wish I could. If I could, I would be there every month. Okay, so you have you know, you've done that um, and you've gone to a business school, right? Do you want to briefly describe your first experience at business school and, and how that um, was? And... Yeah, well, business school I've always found interesting. Uh, the first thing about business school is that I don't gift myself very much time out of this business. I know there are times when I should take it out for planning and all that kind of thing, but I, I work really hard and that's just the way I am. So I don't very often give myself some days out. That's what business school is for me. It's some time out from the business to think, to plan, to listen, to learn new things. And I learn a lot of new things at business school. Um, you know, some of it I love, some of it I don't love so much, but business schools are great. I mean, they're well organised, you get well taken care of, you get really nice food to eat, you get time out of the business to think, you meet other business owners, 
Um, you know, you get to chat, you listen to what other people are doing. That's the value of business school for me. And um, I love to hear Mal and Ian uh, and the other people. I mean, at business school, I have learned so much about marketing, especially from Steve and Pete Godfrey and those people. Um, sometimes I can be quite overwhelmed by the amount of content that's there, but it's just a matter of sticking with the business school and, uh, you know, start at the beginning of the day and finish at the end of the day and take stock of, of what you've learned. When I'm at business school, I tend to keep lists of what I could do. So what are some things I could go home and do? Rather than make notes about what the speakers are saying, I tend to keep a list of some action that I can take and then I come home and have a crack at doing some new things. But, um, you know, I, I love the business schools. I think they're great. I try really hard not to miss them. So now you've, you've signed up with Streetsmart. Let's, let's talk about your first... Um, what the first six months? How do the how does the first six months of Street Smart go? You know, what's it like to first implement all this stuff into your business? Um, what's it like to implement all of the Street Smart things into my business? And what were the first six months like? the The first six months were really, really busy for me. I can't remember exactly how what time passed between one thing and another, but I'm pretty sure that. I signed up for the Frustration to Freedom. I pretty soon after that maybe, so I, I did that maybe in May and then maybe in June or July I went to a business school and at that business school I signed up for the million, Millionaire Makeover, Million Dollar Makeover. Um, and that was when I got really, really busy because up until then I was kind of learning new things and doing some things and tweaking and what have you. But it was when I actually hit the decks with the millionaire makeover. Have I got that right? Is it the millionaire or million dollar? MMO. Million dollar makeover. Million, million dollar makeover. So when I, when I started with that, um, that was really huge for me. Um, but we ended up, we ended up with uh, some major updates to our website. So, so things were really different about how I progressed through the million dollar makeover and you know one of the things that occupied a lot of street smart time and a lot of my time was actually getting the website more functional so that street smart could do some better search engine optimization on it and so that was a it was a really really busy time for me that sort of early the early days in the million dollar makeover um, but it was always interesting and challenging and and fun. And then eventually we got uh, a, a kind of new skin on the website and, and that, that changed. And um, Street Smart could do some significant search engine optimization and some uh, uh, social media sort of work and things started to take off. But it took a while. It was quite a while from when I actually signed up until I started to see some really significant profit change. During that time, about two years or even more, I can tell you I worked really hard. So I think if people are interested in street smart, then the way to success is to be really determined to get the most out of the program, to go into it with an attitude of, you know, just getting the most out of it and being prepared to do the hard work that you will have to do to, to get your business to do what what it could do and what I know our business can do. And I know there's still a lot of really hard work ahead of me and there's no way that I'm, I'm ready to not do that. So, you know, whatever street smart I've got to put before me, um, then I'm really ready to do that hard work. But I know that there will be hard work involved and there has been right from the outset. Okay. Was it, you know, was it a large gap between... Um, you know, between you starting to implement this stuff and you making, you know, you starting to see improvements. Actually, it was there was there was a long time from when I started with Street Smart, when, and I just can't for the life of me, I cannot remember the years when I actually started with Street Smart. But I reckon it was two years or more. Yeah, I reckon it was over two years. 
before I actually started to see an improvement um, in my bottom line. Um, there were a couple of small episodes where our, our um, turnover increased, um, but it wasn't until the last three months of the last financial year, the 2014-15 financial year, it wasn't until the last three months of that that I consistently saw Sorry, I've got a bug flying in front of my face. That I consistently saw an increase in the profits, and that's what I had been looking for. Turnover's all very well, but what I wanted to see was an increase in profit, and that's what I saw in the last three months of the last financial year. So I reckon I went for a good two years with Street Smart and working really hard and doing everything that I possibly could to make a difference, and then we started to see that change and it's been consistent. So now I know I have got a change that is trending upwards and I'm really happy about that. And I was determined to see that happen and I'm really glad I hung in because, you know, I guess like anyone, you could give up at any time, but that wasn't going to happen. Love it. Um, so, you know, when, when it did kick in, when all, and everything started coming to fruition and you know, leads started going up and everything kicked in, what was it like? What happened? What was the, the big moment you're like, wow, this is all kicking in? Oh, well, it kind of happened slowly, really. I Because I do all of the myob for this business as well. Sometimes I don't always get it in every month. And um, so April, in April, I could see that there was a shift in uh, what was happening with the business. We were getting much more busy. Um, our, our leads were more targeted. And I was watching this activity going on and the money flow increasing. And I kept saying to myself, geez, I wish I had time to get the myob in so that I could see what our um, profit was look, is looking like. And so finally, I got time in May to get April in and when I saw the profit, I couldn't believe it. I just went, I can't believe this, I, surely this isn't right and I went all back over my myob stuff to make sure I had everything in and everything had reconciled so it had to be right and I was looking at this profit and I thought, oh wow, that's not going to last, you know, like we've had hiccups before. But then I was in May and May was really looking very much like April and so I was saying to myself well you know maybe maybe it has swung around maybe April May you know maybe it's going to be great in May as well and so then I couldn't wait to get my of data in for May so then I get the my of data in and I look at May and May was fantastic again and I said oh my god it looks like something's changing but you know I was kind of skeptical and I thought oh well I won't get excited until I see it you know, continuing the trend, continuing. So then June was going really well and I got the June data in and it was fantastic and I looked at the last financial year and I saw that our profit was so much better and our profit in the last three months was amazing and I thought I'm not going to get excited until the accountant's been and had a look at it and told me that what I'm looking at is true and the accountant came and said, geez, you've had a last, um, you've had a great last quarter. Actually, you've had a pretty good year and I went, yes! We've done it. Three months. You've got to call that a trend. It's more than a once off. It's more than a twice off. You've got to go three months as a trend. So we celebrated and uh, and we were really excited and, you know, kind of it was the first time I'd let myself go really um, in this business. It was the first time I saw a change that I would call a trend and I was so excited, Michael, so excited. Fantastic. That was my next thing. How did you feel emotionally about that? How was how was it between you and your husband? How was it, you know, with your staff? How did it feel in the business while all these changes were going on? Well, the first thing that was really really nice was when the accountant said to me, "Geez, you've had a great last quarter," and she was smiling because usually she's going, "Oh, Brenda, you do a lot of work for not much money, you know." So. How long are you going to do this for? And the previous quarter I'd said to her, the line is in the sand for the end of June. Come the end of June, if I haven't made a shift, I've really got to think about what I'm doing. And I hit the end of June and I'd done it. So that was the first moment that I sort of let myself 
get more than a little bit excited and she was there and she was laughing and we were laughing and my husband was there and we were all kind of just enjoying the moment and um and and then I let the staff know that we'd had a you know a really good uh, close to the financial year and they were really excited because you know we work really hard in this business the staff and I and and we focus on conversion rates and you know um, average dollar sales and and all those things and they know all that they you know we talk about all that so that they knew that we were we had been doing really well but they didn't know that was the best we'd ever done so they were really excited and 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 we were really excited and um, and my husband and I were kind of dancing around really just like a couple of little kids because we sort of felt like we'd made it um, you know we, we'd spent a lot of money um, on coaching and we were continuing to put a lot of money reinvest a lot of money into the business with SEO and all that and, and the website and all that kind of thing and, and oh my god you know we've done it so very the emotion the overwhelming emotion was excitement and then kind of followed straight on the back of that was oh my god is the trend going to continue it's like <laughs> you know Michael I'm one of those really hard people um it's got to see that trend continuing but yeah yeah it's all good it's it's continuing well, my, ne my next question is, uh, where do you see the business in, in six months? Um, where will the business be in six months is, a, is, is really interesting. I, I am happy uh, over the next six months to see that trend continuing, that increase in profit on a monthly basis. Um, you know, the next six months for me, the priority is not really the business because we're expecting our first grandchild in November this year and we're taking some time out to go and uh, be with our daughter and spend some time um, with with our family so for me I guess the next six months is a bit of a testing time because it's going to say whether the work that I have done with the staff and with the business can carry itself a little bit um, because I, I do want to step back a little bit for some, you know for some of that time and, and not be so embedded in the business. So the next six months is going to be interesting from that perspective. Can this business do as well without as much of my input um, as it has had? Um, and if not, what do I need to do now to, to create a situation where that can happen? But, you know, at the end of the first six months of this financial year, um, I'd really like to see us with double the profit that we had in the first six months of the last financial year. And if I manage to pull that off and have some time with my family, I will be pretty damn happy. Fantastic, fantastic. Now, um, you know, would you would you recommend, you know, this, uh, would you recommend Street Smart to someone else, you know, with this, with the work they did for you and the work that, uh, the things you learned, would you recommend it to other people? Well, I would. I absolutely would. Probably um, until I actually saw that shift come through, I didn't have the same confidence to make that recommendation. But I've seen it now um, and I'm really uh, very confident. One of the things about Street Smart that I have always appreciated has been the, you know, and I don't really know if I'm going to get these words quite right, even for what I want to say, but there's kind of a salt of the earth, honest Australian sort of a platform there and I've always appreciated that. The second is that I think Ian and possibly Mal, but Ian's the one who seems to front this, um, works really, really hard to bring new and interesting and up-to-date and innovative information to the street smart people. And those sort of things, I've always really appreciated that. And I have said to people in the past, look, you know, you should get along to some of the street smart stuff because they're doing interesting things and they've got, uh, you know, really they're, they're on top of current information. But now I feel a stronger conviction that from a business perspective, there's a lot to be had by people hooking up with street smart and engaging in the process and, um, you know, just being 100% determined and giving it your best shot. And I think Ian presents that that concept as well constantly 
of, you know, if you're an Australian small business owner and you're engaged with Street Smart, there is an expectation that you will have pig-headed determination and you will take action and you will be prepared to take responsibility for yourself in that. And, and that's a good place for me and I feel really confident to say to people, if that's where you want to be, then Street Smart's the organisation to be involved with. Fantastic. Now, if I was, if, you know, a friend of yours was um, on the edge and whether they would join Street Smart or not, you know, what would you, what would you say to them? What's a sort of a really quick um, 90 second, you know, 90 second speech just to convince someone who may be on the edge, you know, oh, I don't know if I can really, if it's right for me, you know, that sort of hubbub. Well, in short, I would say to them, come to a business school with me. Just come to a business school, make the time, come to a business school and have a look at what's happening and see for yourself. And if they're a friend of mine, then they would know about my success. And, you know, I would just say to them, it's been amazing for me and come to a business school and check it out for yourself. Okay. Um, you know, what is... What is your biggest takeaway from, from Streets now? What's the, what's the biggest life lesson you've learned from all of this? Oh, life lesson or business lesson? Um, oh, it doesn't really matter. Go, go it doesn't both. really matter because I think that the, um, the biggest lesson for me from being involved with Street Smart, there might be two big lessons, but really the first one is... Uh, just you've, you've got to be really responsible for yourself and your business. And the only person who can make my business succeed is me. I can learn anything I like from Street Smart or, you know, anywhere else. And, and I do read other books and all sorts of things. But ultimately, it's up to me. And Street Smart can only be successful if I am going to take responsibility for my business and I can only be successful if I make good choices about who is going to be involved with my business with me um, and who I'm going to learn from. And at the moment, my choice on that is street smart and I've learned an enormous amount. But one of the things that I've learned, you know, from Ian is just be in there, be a really significant player in your own business and take responsibility. Okay, um, we're down to our sort of last few questions. So, um, how has Ian been? You know, has has Ian been true to his word throughout this whole this whole process? Uh, I just missed the sounds going a bit dodgy, Michael. Did you say has Ian been something in this whole process? Uh, I said, has Ian been uh, truthful? Has Ian been helpful throughout this whole process? Oh, absolutely, absolutely, one hundred percent. Ian is a very truthful, helpful. Honest man, full of integrity. I am a hundred percent convinced of that, and that's really—it's really been Ian's um, honesty and and willing to help me that has kept me involved for this full time. When I wasn't really seeing any um, profit progress, you know, sometimes it was really hard to keep going. But Ian has always been there. Um, doing whatever he could, if there was something he had to get done and he could do it, he did it. And honesty and integrity, 100%. He's my hero. Brenda, you have been amazing through this whole thing. I, I it, It's taken 100 attempts to get this, but this is gold stuff. You've been absolutely amazing. Please, whatever we can do for you, we're at your beck and call. We definitely owe you a favour or a drink um, if you turn out the next business school. Um, I'll let you know what I don't actually drink, Michael, but um, yeah, I'll let you know if I ever need assistance. I'll tell you one thing I do need to know is that um, I'm going to Mal's workshop in um, Sydney next week and I just can't quite get an answer from Jason. I, I, I just need to know that my friend is 